about that. I want to show you how to go through um, the DC Virtual Lab Circuit Construction Kit, uh, which is going to be the basis for um, the, the virtual lab that we're going to be doing. Now, I think on the lab I'm giving to you, it's going to be a URL to take you directly to this site. But if somehow you end up somewhere off of that, FET has tons of simulations, not just for physics, but there's things for some calculus, math, chemistry, biology, physics, and stuff like that. So we're in physics, and we're in electricity, magnets, and circuits. The thing you got to be careful about is there are several different circuits labs, and we want to use this one. And the reason I want to make sure that I use this one is because of how things look, how you place the ammeter and voltmeter in there. So go ahead and you just click on this. It should work in Chrome. I'm in Chrome right now. Um, it does not need you to download anything, no extensions or things like that. So the first thing that it's really going to be important for you to do <coughs> is to change uh, things to show conventional current and not electron current. Um, I don't know why the default is electron current because very few people use those. They talk about values or labels. I haven't selected that. This is where you can select to place an ammeter, a voltmeter. We aren't going to be using wire resistivity. We're going to have basically no wire resistivity, and we're going to have basically no battery resistance. That gives us ideal conditions. If you did parts one and two of the virtual labs, you'll understand um, that a wire can have resistance, but does not necessarily have to. There's a bunch of circuit elements listed over here you can use to make circuits, wire, batteries, bulbs, resistors, switches, um, dollar bills, paper clips, coins, erasers, dogs, hands, pencils. We're not going to use most of that. We're just going to use these for the most part. Ooh, what's this? It's a different type of battery. That's interesting. Um, so I think it's going to be easier for you to understand using the schematic diagram. So I'm going to ask you to select this over here. If you want to use something else, you can, and I'll talk about that, but I think it's easier to visualize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circuit here, um, and I'm going to make a combined circuit, which is one of the more complicated ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this and drag a battery over here. Now, you can't change what this looks like. I'll get to the scissors in just a minute. So I'm going to put a wire over here. And notice you can adjust both the direction that the wire is and how long it is. So something like that. You also can cut things. So if you want to cut this here and want to reposition that wire somewhere else, you can do that. So that's actually pretty nice. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to leave this here. I'm going to put a re one resistor up here. I'm going to put another piece of wire. I'm going to make it short. I'm going to have another wire down here, another wire here, another wire here. I'm making it quite complicated. So this is actually probably more complicated than things up through about part six. I'm going to put another resistor here. It's a little annoying that it kind of does that. You can kind of position it how you want. Another resistor here. I'm going to move it vertical. So maybe I don't have to deal with that mess. And notice now, when I want to shorten those, it actually shortens the wire. Um, going to put another wire here. Another wire here. Again, you'll see why in just a couple minutes. Wire connecting these two, which isn't perfect. And now, wire take me back home. I could do this and connect it right away. It's a little bit annoying, but again, you have some options for how you do this. I'm not checking to see what, ooh, we're going to get rid of that. So if you select a whole thing and you want to get rid of it, you can just select a trash can. And I'm going to go down here. Okay, so there's current flowing at this point. So now, you could also put a switch in if you want. The problem is, where would you put that in right here? Um, I don't think we're going to necessarily use a switch. I'm going to select that again, get rid of that. If I wanted to not have this here, I could cut one of these. And notice now, there's no current flowing. 
So one of the things I want to do is I want to show you how to adjust the values of these things. So this is a battery, and if you notice down here, it's set to 9 volts. Um, if you click down, it goes back in half volt increments. So for me, I want to have this where we've got, say, 4.5 volts. Something like that. If you wanted to flip the polarity of it, you could do that. I don't think we need to. At this point, we're dealing with DC circuits. So that's good. Current's flowing again. If I want to make this resistance something, I'm going to make this resistance 5 ohms. I'm going to make click on this resistor. I'm going to make it 10 ohms. It already is. That's the default. I'm going to click on this resistor and make it 25 ohms. Those are some of the resistances that we're going to be using in this lab. Okay. Now, if you want to measure potential difference, you can pull a voltmeter out here, and you can simply touch this to either side. Now, if you notice, that doesn't read anything. So you would either have to touch it to something, like the edges of these of the where the voltmeter is, which are these areas, the circle. And now if you notice it says 4.5 volts. Here it also says 4.5 volts. So traditionally the red is touching the positive side, which is the longer side of the battery, and the black is touching the negative side. One thing I don't particularly care about since we're dealing with voltages and potential difference. If you happen to get this flip-flopped and you see negative 4.5 volts, which is what this says over here, that doesn't bother me. So I'm going to probably write down the absolute value of things. And it, real labs, when we do this instead of virtual labs, we get negatives all the time. We don't worry about it. Okay. So now to measure the voltage across this resistor, I go here and here. And that's 1.85 volts. Again, I'm ignoring the negative. To go here and here, it's 2.65. Now, this branch is in parallel with this branch. So if you measure, remember things about parallel circuits and parallel parts of circuits, this is 2.65. Hopefully, this is as well. It actually does measure that from up there as well. And the 2.65 plus what we had up here which is 1.85 would equal 4.5 volts. So if you want to get rid of that, you just drag it back in to where the voltmeter belongs. Now to use an ammeter here, it's a little tougher because you've got to put that in line with whatever um, you're measuring. So that's why I put these extra parts of um, wires in here. So I'm going to click on this at this point and I'm going to get rid of that chunk of wire. And now I'm going to put the ammeter up here and it's not connecting but I shortened that wire and so now it is and that's reading 0.37 amps okay so that's the total current in the circuit now if I want to move this I could either just eliminate it I could do it I can't drag it back because it's in there so I'm going to get rid of this at this point I could put it back by the way doesn't seem to like that okay Okay, doesn't seem to like that it's being able to be, uh, I'm going to just leave it kind of crooked like that. So one of the things you could do, you could cut that, and you can make this maybe move down a little bit. I want to bring that back, that's fine. I want to bring that back, that's fine, okay. Um, you could put more than one ammeter in here at a time. We generally can't do that in lab because we don't have more than one. So if you want to measure the current through each of these branches, instead of moving this out and then back in here, which we'd have to do, what I can do is I can remove, it doesn't matter whether it's before or after the wire, but I'll, I'll remove this one. And I can put an ammeter in here. I'm going to shorten this down. Have that go there. That's 0.11 amps. The other thing is, is I can move this up and get rid of this piece of, eh, get rid of this piece of wire here or cut that out and make it you know if I, if I just cut this I disconnect it by the way notice when I did that now this has got 0.15 amps that had 0.15 amps so if I want to put um, this piece of wire back here it does change what's going on in here 
So I'm going to cut that again because it affects the resistance of the entire circuit. I'm going to get rid of this, this whole thing down here. And I'm going to put another ammeter down the bottom. Probably could get rid of that one up there too, couldn't I? And it doesn't matter. 0 0.26, 0 0.11, 0 0.37 amps. So that's kind of how I do that. Um, might be better if you want to um, start a new circuit. You could either add to things or you could just reset the whole thing over here. By the way, if it looks like this, this is part of the problem with drawing things. These resistors are kind of fat. The batteries doesn't look too bad. Um, but the resistors have a bunch of different bands on it. Um, those color bands tell you how much resistance something has. Um, not that important for what we're doing. So I think the schematics are a little easier to visualize. So again, if I want to reset, I can do that and I can start again. And hopefully that helps you um, figure out how to use this. If you have other questions, obviously, um, make sure that you, you ask me on the mind or during um, Google Hangouts. Notice when I reset though, it does go back to electron current. Remember, I want conventional current um, and I want schematics. Okay, I might ask you to screenshot this at some point. Not a big deal overall. At any rate, that's your tutorial. And I just noticed this. Um, it might be easier for you to see if you do click on the values over here, if you do click on those values, it'll show you what the battery voltage is and resistance and things like that. And then you can still click on it and change it, either by the slide rule. Ooh, holy cow. I don't know if we burn an ammeter out at that point. Or by adjusting it something like this. So same way here, you can click on this, adjust it to a lot of resistance, a little resistance, things like that. Um, okay. So you, I would recommend clicking this values button. It'll help you out. That's it.